I sincerely wish the way the concept of intersectionality was taught, preached, interpreted, and most of all practiced by those who study it was quite different. This is no different than how I feel about those who call themselves Christians who have almost nothing to do with the teachings of the fictional character named Jesus. Oh wait, Jesus. Here is my take on how one could best support a group other than one's own. First and foremost, don't get in that group's way of representing themselves and their own issues. Don't constantly speak against that group. Sure, just as anyone else, you should be able to freely speak out when you see a wrongdoing within a group and call out when that group isn't giving their own the same scrutiny as other groups. But if that's almost all you talk about, I think there's a problem. Don't act as if you're that group's spokesperson. Again, don't get in that group's way of representing themselves and their own issues. As well-meaning as you may be, unless you're defending against blatantly false things being said about that group, you're not a spokesperson for that group. You don't really truly understand the grievances of that group. Yeah, Steve Shives and Lacey Green, I mean people like you. You constantly act like the spokespeople for several groups you don't belong to as well as getting in the way of their progress because your goal is to get everyone on board with your beliefs. You show that you often don't actually truly care about the groups you claim to care about. You care more about spreading your ideology than anything else because you've convinced yourself in some sort of strange rewriting of history that your ideology is responsible for the progress of every group throughout history, that your ideology is responsible for everything good that's happened in the world. It's similar to Reconstructionists and Dominionists in regards to the government of the United States, but much worse because you attribute it to the entire history of humans across the globe. That goes way beyond what any other religion makes the claim of. According to you and your beliefs, if someone has your ideology, they're automatically better people, just as a number of Christians out there think they're better people for being Christians. Seriously, let women discuss women's grievances. Let men discuss men's grievances. Let black people discuss black people's grievances. Let white people discuss white people's grievances. Let trans people discuss trans people's grievances. It doesn't matter if you like that group or not. It doesn't matter if you think that group actually has anything significant to complain about or not. Let them have their say. Let them talk about their grievances. If there's something you can say that can help alleviate the worries and concerns of the people talking about their grievances, go for it, but don't make fun of them for talking about their grievances. What may not be a big deal to you, for whatever reason, could be a huge deal to other people. If you don't understand why it pains them so much, then do what you can to get a better understanding, but don't make fun of them for it. If what they want is unreasonable, they will eventually realize it on their own. If we make fun of them for it, they can use that as a platform to get support from, regardless of how outrageous and ridiculous their views actually are. This is exactly how some of these idiotic views have spread so far, in ways that would never have gotten any traction previously. I'm sick of people who call themselves intersectional feminists claiming to know gay issues. Um, yeah, you don't know jack shit about gay issues other than you want to publicly display empathy towards and virtue signal against what gay people used to regularly experience, just as many people sort of feign empathy towards slavery. I say feign empathy because we don't have anything to directly connect those things with current times. I mean, unless you're the type of person who will burst into tears reading a history book, it's feigned empathy. It's attempts to be empathetic, and that's very commendable unless one uses that as a platform to push a separate agenda, and then at that point it becomes something very manipulative and controlling, just like what religious people often do. The things that many intersectional fourth-wave feminists shove forth toward straight men is incompatible with gay men just as much as it's incompatible with straight men. They'll of course tell you otherwise, but they want to claim to be the spokespeople for gay men while only caring about spreading their own agenda, and somehow want gay men to treat feminism as if it's responsible for gay rights. It's offensive, but we mustn't say such because, you know, misogyny. You know, those, those fourth-wave feminist messages of, don't think about sex too much, 
Don't look at people's bodies or objectify people unless you have their explicit permission. Don't actually be gay and get in a sexual relationship or any relationship at all while holding on to any value in people's pheromones or in what they have between their legs because that's being prejudiced and bigoted towards people with vaginas. Don't have any visual sexual preferences at all because that's close-minded. Be exactly what women want, but completely be yourself. It's easy, and if it's difficult, then you're misogynistic and support rape culture.